Hey, what's going on, Levator Nation? Did you know that physical therapy can be utilized and have actually a lot of benefits for patients that have cancer, or also known as oncology? Now, I don't know about you, but before PT school and during PT school, I had no idea that oncology was, an e was even a specialty in physical therapy until oh, one of my freaking classmates got a residency to be a resident for oncology physical therapy. So in this special interview video, he gave me his luxurious time because he's having a, he has, the, he doesn't have that much time right now because he's in residency and working so hard, but he was willing to sit down and uh, allow me to pick his brain about oncology physical therapy because I mean, I don't even know that much about it. So if you're interested in physical therapy and working with patients that have cancer, please, please, please make sure you watch this video all the way to the end so you can learn all about that. So let's get into this Lego. All right, all right. What is up everyone? Today we have a very special guest here on this video. As you guys know, we are doing a bunch of videos on the specializations in physical therapy. And I have my really good friend, Tracy Moore, who's gonna talk about the specialization in oncology. Now oncology, for those of you who don't know, is pretty much another way to say cancer. So treating patients with, that are undergoing cancer treatments or patients that have cancer. So you're like, how does that work? You know what? Don't worry. I'm going to let the specialist talk all about it. So ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Moore. Guy, uh, Tracy, why don't you tell me a little bit about your path to physical therapy and then talk a little bit about your, um, you know, your specialization in oncology. Awesome. So first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, always good to see my friend <laughs> Justin here, Live for Change. Um, so yeah, I'm Tracy. I'm currently a resident undergoing a specialization in oncology for physical therapy. Um, and how I got to be a PT, um, I'll give you guys kind of the abbreviated version. But at first, when I got interested in physical therapy, I actually uh, was just in a car talking with a friend on the way to dinner. <laughs> and we we're just going to dinner, like going to eat. And it's like, hey, how do you like your job? And she was like, man, it's pretty awesome. I'm a physical therapist. And I was like, oh, what's that? You know, we're talking and she was explaining this job that sounded really cool. And I had previously wanted to be an athletic trainer. But everything she was saying about PT was all the stuff that I liked about like my picture of athletic training. Um, and none of the stuff that I wasn't that excited about. I wasn't really down to like travel with the teams or do anything like that. And <clears throat> she just explained it really well. So it's like four of us in the car or whatever. And like by the end of the car, right, I'm like sold. I'm looking into this like physical therapy thing. And anyone who knows me kind of knows I'm not really like a halfway do it or halfway don't. Like if I'm, if I do something, I go all in. So Definitely. literally once I got home from that car ride, I went online, figured out like what's physical therapy, looked up like the different schools, the like job requirements and all that kind of stuff. And then the next semester started in like two weeks, I signed up for classes for prerequisites and like went for it. Wow. Um, and then here I am today, somehow tricked them. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, that's pretty much like the short version of how I got into PT school. Um, I will say like, the application was definitely more intimidating than I think I gave it credit for, but I'm so glad that I went through it because um, I would not want to be doing any other job right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's like a, I think that is that your, your story right there just shares so much. And I think it has so much uh, value that a lot of students could look up to just on how, <clears throat> You decided you're going to do something and you just go all in. And in a matter of two weeks, you sign up for prerequisites and just got the ball rolling. Like right. imagine if you had doubt or you just hesitated. I mean, think about how much longer that process would have taken. Yeah. It, doubt is the worst because that will totally crush you. Like 
I even remember in PT school. So like I had a really, really hard time in the beginning of PT school with some different things going on in my life and family stuff. And my focus was just not there. Right. Um, and there is like one class I did not very well. You can't. Okay. So in PT school, a B is like the lowest grade. If you get a C, it's basically an F, right? Yeah. So like, I was like really struggling, like on that borderline and like barely pulled it out by, you know, the grace of God, I was able to pass this class. And then I remember like from that point forward, it was like, I had had so much doubt and like, am I going to make it? Am I going to fail out of my first semester of PT school? Like, this is ridiculous. And then I was thinking about it and it's like, why am I wasting all this energy? Like wondering if I'm going to make it, I just need to go for it. <clears throat> I need to do what I came here to do like there is no failure there is that's not an option and so from that point on it's not that PT school is still it's still very difficult but <clears throat> it was only difficult because of the subject matter and because of the intensity and not because I was putting barriers in front of myself doubting you know and wondering if things were gonna go so I think once you make the decision to go you in anything in life really once you make the decision you got to give it your all you can't be on both sides of the fence you know mm, i love that so what was the decision to go for this field in oncology how did how did that go about um so i've really i've always been interested in cancer um as a subject uh, we have some history of cancer in my family uh and Actually, I don't, I don't know like how personal we're allowed to get, but get I mean, personal as you want, man. Okay. Well, when I was young, my mother had cancer um, and she actually died when I was young of a brain tumor. And it's not like one of those, like, you know, like Batman, like he loses his parents and goes and becomes like some kind of like yeah. tortured superhero or whatever. Like it's more like just kind of this like understanding, you know, like that, this is a real thing. It's not like some far off thing that, you know, like people do research and you always hear about research and it, it had touched my life at a very young age. So I think that that interest was always there, but in PT school, I really felt like we were very well educated for certain areas of practice and in other areas, we just didn't, know as much and it makes sense because PT is a generalist degree right so you get taught a little bit of everything and you get taught the most of the most common things which totally makes sense but oncology was one of those where I felt like just unprepared you know and not not against my school or anything like that it's just like I feel like I didn't have any <clears throat> extra time to devote to this so when someone came to lecture to us about oncology and all these different residencies, there's ortho residencies, uh, neuro oncology. Um, there was even one, I think with like uh, veterans and stuff that sounded super cool. Right. But the oncology one stood out to me because when I thought about it, it was like, I could go do an ortho residency. I could go do a neuro, but I feel that there are, quite a few of these people already. There are a lot of people who are super good in this field. Um, and I know where to find that information. Like it might take me longer to do it outside of a residency, but I, I can get good at that. For oncology, I felt I wouldn't even know where to start. So um, I think that's kind of where it came to be. Like it piqued my interest. And so I reached out to the residency director um, and shadowed the current resident um, at the time. Um, actually applied to work per diem at the place that the residency was uh, going on at City of Hope and then applied for the residency um, after getting a little experience there because I just, it was like really quick. I loved it so much, but I knew like if I wanted to get to the level where I wanted to be at, that the residency would be the fastest way to do that. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> so many questions. Uh, uh, where do I begin? Where do I begin? Uh, <laughs> what, why don't we talk a little bit more about like, just w what's it like to be in the, in the oncology, oncology field in physical therapy and what does, how does that differ from like ortho or whatever? 
I think it's actually, it's super cool because something I didn't anticipate was like, in oncology, you get everything. So like you get the ortho stuff, you get the neuro stuff, you have um, like lymphedema, you have plenty of other things that go on. So the interesting part about cancer is like, it actually is something that affects us from all different ages. And so like you might have young kids that have sarcoma or like bone cancers and stuff, or you have older adults that have certain types of cancers that affect them more often. Everybody really hears about like breast cancer and prostate cancer, but there are so many different types of um, effects. And so really, even with the brain cancers, like you have things that will present as a stroke or you have someone who might present with a traumatic brain injury that was induced by a tumor. Um, and then you basically get the whole gamut. So it's like you, you get a little bit of everything, which is exciting because it stays different, but it also is just like, there's so much energy. I mean, energy, there's so much, um, like information coming in all the time and there's so much potential for you to like really get, as specialized as you want or to be as kind of general as you want within the field so I think it's really cool um and also like I think that you really have a great chance to work in tandem with your um like interdisciplinary team like Mm. you collaborate a lot more with the MDs and with the OTs and speech and all these other nurses and everything like that because at the end of the day like I've worked in an outpatient ortho clinic before and probably the most collaboration I would have is with treatment authorizations. And, you know, like if they're going to go in for a surgery, like getting prehab and talking with the doctor to, you know, let them know how the patient's doing before they come back. But here it's like day to day things change so drastically with some patients that you might have to talk to a few people before you can even see the patient. Mm and that's coordinating with family. And then once you add COVID on top of that, then it's even different, even more difficult sometimes. And I think it presents a a challenge for sure. But like, I think, I don't know. I love it a lot. It's definitely an amazing field to be in. Yeah. What, uh, what's a day look like for you? Like, um, you know, how does, Like, give me, give me the day-to-day things or like the everyday things, the treatment, like how does that change? So really quick to give you guys some background, like since I'm currently in the residency, it's a year long program. The first six months of this residency are inpatient and the second six are outpatient. So right now I'm outpatient. Hmm. Um, And the reason that matters is because the treatment structure is a little bit different. So usually I wake up in the morning you know, have my little breakfast and coffee, you know, do my devotions and everything. And then I get out the door. Um, Right now, we're, um, I start at 8.30 right now. So I get in, do my chart review, and we do one hour treatments. So um, each hour on the hour, uh, there's a patient coming in, and it could be for any number of different things. But typically speaking, You know, like lately I've been getting a lot more shoulder patients, um, you know, like post mastectomy shoulder pain, they might have uh, fibrosis from radiation or something like that, that they're coming in for. And it's a really cool learning opportunity. Um, I guess because I'm more used, at least before I was more used to seeing these shoulder patients that hurt their arm throwing a ball or something like that. And those, you know, there's a lot you can do with them. And then with the post mastectomy shoulder patients, it's like, there's still tons you can do, but you have to be so much more creative because sometimes there's just certain, like, okay, for, for example, I'm going to, I'm going to go on a tangent, but for example, so when you have a mastectomy, which means that you have a breast removed for, um, due to like a tumor or something, thing they'll remove the breast and then usually if they're trying to get rid of a tumor they'll do radiation treatment to that area the problem with radiation is that it can make all the soft tissue tighten up really tight um, and it can last for months or years right so where someone with a frozen shoulder might come in and 
once that kind of works itself out, their shoulder is pretty much mobile. These people need to stretch and they need to take extra time doing this stuff and they have to do it for the rest of their lives or else it's going to tighten back up, right? So um, the techniques that you'd use to approach somebody like that are a lot different than the ones that you might use to approach somebody who's like just a pure impingement or something. But at the same time, like, actually that's a lie. The techniques are pretty much very similar, but the approach is different and the strategy is different because you might have to spend certain, you know, more time in the manual therapy than you do on the exercises or, you know, if they're really good at doing the stretches at home, then you kind of open up your world a little and you can do other stuff. Um, But so we'll see the patients, they come in and then usually as a resident, after I get off work, then I go home and read some research or do some papers that need to be done. And, um, you know, things like that. Um, I'm working on like a scholarly project that it's pretty fun, but it's really busy. It's very fast paced. Um, but it's for a good reason. Yeah. It's definitely making me learn more and like take ownership of my career yeah. and my development. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, you know, it's, I think it's so great that you're going through a residency to have, you know, the mentorship with, with patients that have cancer. Cause I feel like if I got it and I was like, I'm going to figure this out, I would just be so lost, especially in this uh, very, you know, not so common area in physical therapy, at least, you know, right. um, but for really quick, for those of you who are listening, if you want to get a specialization in any kind of field residency is a quick way which is typically one year with mentorship and you get paid and then you're pretty much already um, set up for success for the examination to get certified at the end right uh, which is why one of the big reasons why you did it as well yeah you either need like a certain number of contact hours with a patient population uh, or to complete a residency. That's usually the requirement. I think it's the same for the OCS and the NCS and maybe a GCS too. But you also, you can't double dip. So it's not like you can like, oh, like I saw this geriatric person who is post-stroke and also like, you know, like you can't, it's one or the other. So like that's the tricky part. So residency is definitely an investment in that sense. Like if you know you're going to go for the uh specialist certification yeah um but it's not like i would not say like if you don't know what to do after pt school i wouldn't say you should just like i guess i'll do a residency like you really should know because it is it really is an investment like personal um like your time and uh your relationships like you do have to say no to a lot of stuff that you'd like to do to make sure that you're excelling where you're at because if you're not then you're putting yourself through all this stress for no reason and you're doing yourself a disservice and your, your patients really too. Yeah. Well said, my friend. Well said. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, I know you on a personal level, so I know that you are a, you know, a plus guy, the (laughs) go-to guy, like super knowledgeable, genuine, uh, super personable. Like I would have my mother, you know, I would be totally comfortable having you treat my mother. You know, that's how, you know, basically you're a great guy. Hey guys, really quick. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you have any comments or any follow-up questions regarding oncology or physical therapy or the merging of those two, don't forget to comment below. And lastly, if you like this series on specializations in physical therapy, don't worry. There are so many of them in the world of physical therapy, and I am going to talk about all of them. So if you're interested in any of that, don't forget to subscribe and hit those notification bells so you don't miss that video when it drops. All right, let's get back to that interview. Uh, but I was curious, since you are, you're already going through a residency and or in this field of oncology, you know, I think every field kind of, you know, has its own perks. And I feel like certain personalities blend better with certain totally, yeah. fields. 
what would you say would be like a, like maybe like one or two traits or characteristics someone should have that you feel like would be a good fit for oncology? That is a good question. Okay, so one of my favorite professors I had in school, his name is Dr. Suleki, right? Um, something that he said before we went on our rotations has stuck with me to this day. So I'm going to borrow a little bit from what he said for this answer. I think that, so the question we asked him was, what should we do to prepare before we come to your clinic? And to give you guys some background, this was like, we learned all this stuff for like a year and a half, two years. And then we're like, okay, like they're about to send us out of the nest into the real world to treat some patients. Right. Right. So we're all nervous and we're asking him, what should we do to prepare? And he said, you should read sports illustrated time magazine and people magazine. I think, and he's basically, and we're looking at him wondering like, what are you talking about? Like, I thought he was going to start laughing after he said that. And he didn't, he's just like, yeah, read the magazines. And so I'm like, <laughs> like what? He was like, well, if you can know about sports, current events and pop culture, you can have a conversation about anything. That's right. And I think that's the first uh, characteristic I would say that you need to have, especially in oncology. Mm. Because I found so many times where patients just need to have a conversation. Like they just need to, somebody to see them as a person and they are so much more willing to trust you as a clinician and to really get invested in their own health the way that you are. If you can relate to them about something that they actually enjoy, you know, if I come in and say like, Hey, you know, Miss Smith, let's get your shoulder abduction range of motion to 180 degrees so that you can allow yourself to I don't know like some stupid treatment goal or you know whatever the case is I just walk in and tell her these ridiculous goals even if they're totally realistic just like I don't like who are you and why should I care you know but like if you walk in and you know you can strike up a conversation like yeah sure it takes five minutes of your treatment but the next 45 minutes are going to be so much more productive than it ever would have been. If you have to try to get buy-in with every single activity you ever do, you know, and they're going to do their home exercise program. If they like you, they're going to be more willing to say, okay, Justin told me I need to do this exercise program and he really thinks it's going to help me. So I don't want to fail him when I go in, I'm going to do this and we'll see how it goes instead of like, you're just coming in and you're another doctor just telling them what to do, yeah. you know? Yeah. And there's a place for that. I understand. But as physical therapists, I think you have a unique opportunity to connect with people on a level that other professions don't get to do. Yeah. And that's such a huge part. And on that note, I would say that the second trait um, of someone who's good in oncology, I think would it sounds cheesy, but I think that you do need to have some level of empathy for your patients because it's not that you need to sit there and like cry with them all the time. You know, sometimes that may happen and it might be, I would never say cry with them as a strategy. I'm just saying like, you know, sometimes it's it's hard. Like oncology is a really hard field and there are some really heavy days. um, And sometimes it just gets to you, but more than just like, just crying with somebody I mean like being empathetic in the sense that like you know that you both know they have cancer you know and it's not like a secret like that's why they're there you know you're probably working at a cancer center or something or at least it's come up and there's a lot of stuff that comes with that you know like we talk about like psychological factors and biological factors and social factors that come with different things. And a lot of those play into a cancer diagnosis, whether it's like early treatment or, you know, they've had a history of cancer and now they're, um, you know, like post-treatment. And we call in cancer in oncology, we call patient, anyone who's been diagnosed with cancer, you call them a cancer survivor. So from the first day of diagnosis until end of life, they're called a cancer survivor. And I think that as much as like, 
I think that we could use better verbiage, but I think that the point they're trying that the point that's made with that statement is a powerful one. And I think like being able to just understand that, you know, like this is about more than just PT. I'm not just here for you to get a five out of five MMT or to boost your strength or grip strength by five pounds or whatever. I'm really here to make a connection and help you to live life better. I think that that is something that you need to have in oncology because once you lose sight of that, mm. it, it's so much harder for you and for your patients on every level, Yeah, you know? <clears throat> yeah. That's a, you know, just like you mentioned, like it's no secret that the patient's there because of cancer. Right. You know, like it's such a big thing. Like I remember right. when I was first in the clinic and one of the questions we should ask to just screen the patient is like any history of cancer? Like, yeah, I feel like even asking that question, I felt so awkward or it was just so like weird because it's like such right. a big thing. But now like, you know, you actually being in that field, just heading, hitting it on the head. It's like, you have to have some sort of uh, empathy and, and some sort of like a uh, human humanness to it right yeah and i think you'd be surprised like it's not all okay so it's not always the answer but you'd be surprised how many people actually just really appreciate some sense of humor about some stuff too Mm. so you obviously have to be really careful because you could go wrong real quick (laughs) but like (laughs) has there been an incident where this has happened to you (laughs) no i've thank goodness no i'm usually pretty good about figuring that part out um but I am also famous for befriending my patients just enough that it's okay for us to make fun of each other. More so me making fun of them while they're doing exercises, but you know, um, yeah, yeah, I haven't really gotten into hot water with anybody, but I think that a little bit, a little bit of humor goes a long way in some circumstances, but at the same time, that's where the empathy comes in. Cause if you just come in trying to make fun of your patients all the time, it's not, you know, that's, (laughs) that's kind of a, (laughs) Oh man. Yeah. Not a good move. Not a good move. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing all of that. That was like, you know, I think that brought a lot of good insight as to what oncology and your field particularly Mm -hmm. specifically would entail. Um, what are, I don't know if you know this or anything, but what are job opportunities like, um, in the oncological physical therapy field? It depends. So like, if you're going strictly into oncology, then you're probably going to be like I mentioned before at like an outpatient or, I mean, uh, yeah, either an inpatient or an outpatient cancer center. Right. So I'm on the West coast, uh, California. So there are a couple but you're at these bigger cancer centers, at least for physical therapy, that's going to be the largest concentration of jobs. Right. And I would say turnover for staff is not very high, right? Like when people get into oncology, it's not like a, like, let's cross my fingers and see how this works. It's like, they're really here for a reason. And if they sign on for a full-time job, they're really not like trying to like just leave for no reason. Right. But, um that being said i do know like it's a quickly growing field um there are more centers being built and i I, there is a lot of uh availability for per diem and stuff like that um respective to like the staff positions but um yeah i would i would say that it's expanding for sure but i couldn't really put a number to it yeah yeah, man. So you know, there's probably not too many cancer centers and hospitals around the United States. So maybe the job opportunity is not as uh, uh, concentrated as much as like other prof- other specializations, you think? Yeah, I'd say if you're looking for like a comprehensive can- cancer center where you get to see a wide variety of stuff, then you you would probably have to look for those. Um, but I'm sure, I mean, cancer is something that's ubiquitous, right? Like it's all over the place. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I think something like two in three 
females and one in three males or something like that. I made a flip flop those, but sure. it's a large percentage of people will be diagnosed with cancer. And so I'm sure that if you search for oncology, physical therapy in your area, there's a clinic or a place that probably sees, um, cancer patients it just depends on like what type of feel you're going for you know i know there's some smaller clinics but um if you're trying to get the widest variety it would be one of the comprehensive cancer centers for sure for sure yeah so you talked a lot about uh, a lot of pros in this field um can you share maybe like one or two cons that you didn't really ex anticipate maybe getting into here and you're like oh wow this was this is a lot more than I thought it was or something like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Cons. Okay. So this sounds obvious, but like, I think con number one is that it's just really emotionally taxing some days. And I'm like a super easy, like you guys don't know me, like, but when I say like easy going, like, I've been told I'm too easygoing sometimes, you know, like you're too easy. Uh, I've really done. <laughs> you're stupid. I, <laughs> I don't like, of course, like, I mean, I get stressed and stuff like that, but I mean, like if you try to tell me I'm going to have a tough time doing something, I will tell you, no, I'm not, you know, like in physical therapy school, like I got married at the end of PT school while we were doing finals and all that kind of stuff. And I was TAing, and I was moving and I, you know, all this stuff happening at one time. But like, I promise you, when I talk to people about it, I was like, that was one of the funnest times of my life. Like people would tell me like this wedding planning is going to be really stressful. And I actually helped a lot. So just so you know, like I, <laughs> I actually was very active in our wedding planning and I really enjoyed it. So there's hope for you people out there, brothers. <laughs> all right. So anyways. <laughs> Um, I reason I say that is because like getting into oncology like people would tell me like this is really taxing this is emotional like it's very stressful and I was like okay I hear you but like is it really is it is it like I know it is but like is it that bad and like some days it's really that bad you know like there are people some days are great and then some days people die you know and like this is something that I've literally been walking into a room and find out that they died five minutes ago. Wow. Or I've walked into a room and found out that I'm the first person to talk to this person after she found out her cancer is back, you know, like yeah. she's in remission, she got surgery and everything and she's all in the clear and then finds out five minutes before I get in there that her cancer's back and it's stage four, you know, and, there are some heavy days like that and it's not, you can't avoid it, you know, like an outpatient, um, like ortho, it's not as common, you know, people are coming in for different things and it happens, but it's not as common, but you can have people dying and people losing people. And just like, no matter how positive or great they are, sometimes people just, you know, the cancer takes over. Yeah. So I think that that's definitely a part of this field that's difficult um, and it's hard to not take that home sometimes, you know, yeah. um, because it can take, if you're not careful, it really can take a toll on you and on your family life and everything like that too. Um, yeah, I'm really great. My wife's great she's like very uh encouraging and kind of like you know uplifting and stuff and she totally gets it um that some days are you know tougher than others um and she's also a pt so there's that like but um yeah i'm very grateful for her and then i'd say that cons also i would say that's the biggest one i would also say that not necessarily a con, but like since oncology in PT is a new field, it's kind of like hard to know if I wasn't in the residency, like where to go for good continuing education, like, you know, like the really solid material. Right. 
I'm very fortunate because like a lot of it's built into my program and I have a lot of awesome coworkers and like um, mentors and stuff. I can reach out and just ask because I know people, but if you're trying to get into oncology, it could be kind of tough to, cause it's a very small network. It's, you know, it, it's hard to like figure some of that out, but not impossible for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, I know. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely not an easy, easy thing. And one of the, you know, as, as fascinating as cancer can be, you know, the, the negative side that a lot of people are just focused on is death, right? Like that's right. Kind of the outcome of, just this prolonged cancer. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, it comes a lot more often than you might ever expect it to come. So you right. know, just having, having that in mind, I think is always a, a good thing to have be expectant on, but hopefully not, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's a, it's hard to talk. It's hard. It's yeah. Well, I mean, it's good though that it's hard because it deserves mm. respect, you know, like mm. the fact that we're on this earth for a season, right? And we're, we each are put here for a purpose. And when that time's up, like no one knows when that's coming, you know, but at the same time, like I, there's something that I remind myself daily is that it's not my job to beat cancer. It's not my patient's job to beat cancer because neither one of us has any control over the disease, right? It's my job to help them live the best that they possibly can in the time that they have left, whether that's 15, 20, 30 years, or whether that's 30 days. My job is just to, if I can leave them better than they were when I met them, and I can help improve their quality of life in any way, then I've done my job. And I think I try to remind myself that. Um, and, you know, like, try to have fun with it, you know, because the patients really like they're there to get better, but they also, you know, like who doesn't want to have a good time? You know, if you, if you have to deal with something like you're going to look for somebody that makes you smile before you look for somebody that makes you do 15 more push-ups. you know, like that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. So, you know, as much as it's like a serious thing, it's also like something to like, you know, yeah. You you understand each other. Well, you are uh, by far out of anyone that I know, probably the most fit for this position. So, thank you, thank you. Um, I had one last question, and I think this is for anyone who is even slightly interested in this field, um, because I always like to give practical advice or tips. Mm. So, in your practical advice, what would you say is like? one thing a student, whether they're pre-physical therapy or in PT school, that they can get involved with right now or take action right now to even have one step forward in getting involved in oncology, what would that be? Ooh, that's really good. Uh, okay, can I say two? Sure. Okay. Uh, it's only because we're good friends. That's why I get to cheat. <laughs> Pick that. Okay, so I would say number one, like it, it goes back to the same thing. Try to invest in the skill of building conversation. If you can talk about anything, if you're the type of person that can have a conversation about anything that anyone brings up, then you will be better off no matter what field you get into, but especially in oncology. Mm. The second thing that I would say is actually just reach out to like look for an oncology physical therapist and go shadow them because there's some stuff that you can look up. I mean, you guys are already Googling stuff. Obviously you're online because you wouldn't be watching YouTube if you're not searching for information. Right. That's so, right. That's right. Right. So take that. But um, <laughs> you would, so you can look up stuff about cancer, but the thing is that uh, as physical therapists, I think there are some things that, it's really beneficial to see another therapist do and realize we have the power to help treat p patients that you might not normally think were possible to treat, or you might think on paper, like that doesn't sound that interesting to me. Like 
why would I want to treat head and neck cancer or whatever? But then you see somebody do it and it's actually very mind blowing, you know? Um, so I'd say, yeah, reach out to like an oncology um, PT or an oncology clinic or even like an MD. Um, I've got the chance to shadow MDs um, in the clinic while I've been in the residency. And it is so cool, like so cool that how much stuff they do and actually how well we can work together as PTs and MDs or um, nurse practitioners or whatever, surgeons, when we understand each other's professions better. So I'd say like, those are the two things. Wow. That yeah. is, that's wisdom right there, man. Wisdom right there. Uh, before we end, was there, is there anything that you would like to share with any uh, student that would be interested in this field or in residency or anything like that? Totally. I think that you guys are more capable than you give yourself credit for as PTs. We are hyper competitive. Uh, we are very, very action oriented and we don't give our, cut ourselves slack, you know, and I think that that's great sometimes, but you need to balance everything. Everything in life should be balanced, right? So as much as you're a go-getter, cut yourself some slack, learn to relax a little bit. If you're already relaxing a lot, pick it up a little bit, you know, like you got to just balance everything. And I would say that for anyone who's interested in a residency, make sure you discuss it with your family. If you're married or you're seriously dating, whatever, um, because it is an investment, but at the same time, for those who are not considering it or not interested, you don't need to be, a resident to become an excellent therapist. Because even if you go through a residency, if you do it half baked the whole way through, you're not going to be an expert on the other side. You're going to be a very well qualified person with some letters and a little bit more knowledge than you had when you graduated. And that's not going to do anyone any good. So whichever way you go, make peace with it, go all the way in, do the best that you can to be excellent where you're at. Um, and, don't measure your success by other people's just you make your path and you go down that path with confidence. Um, and I just pray that all of you have been peaceful and safe in this time. And uh, yeah, I'm really thankful for the opportunity to talk to you guys. Wow. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Moore, who is a current resident at a uh, city of hope in oncology uh, really quick before we log off here, how can students get in contact with you um, or just ask you a little bit more questions? Uh, yeah, if you guys have questions, you can email me uh, at T-R-A-M-O-O-R-E at C-O-H dot org. So it's like Trey Moore at cityofhope.org. Um, I don't really post that much on social media yet. Um, I, I am going to make a comeback. Trust me. Uh, so, I mean, you could follow me on Instagram. Eventually I'll post some stuff. Uh, it's C more T more. So S E E T wait, that's not how you spell C more S E E M O R E T M O O R E like my last name. Yeah. Perfect. And I'll be sure to link everything in the description below. So that'd be nice and convenient for all of you guys. Perfect. Cause I can't spell. <laughs> All right, Tracy. Well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I hope the, the rest of the residency goes phenomenal for you. I know you're finishing up in uh, just like almost half a year or quarter left. Just fit, work hard, you know, keep your eyes on the prize. And I know you'll make a difference in so many lives as you already done so far. Thanks so much, Justin. It's good to see you, bro. Good to see you too, man. All right. Have a good night. All right. You too.